Yo ho, uh, I'm back with part two of whatever I'm going to call this video. This is um, basically what's in my top tray with added ramblings, personal pen journeys, um, and you know, general talking rubbish about pens. So if you're not interested in the ramble and the general what if and you know my voice and rah, 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 rah. you can you know um so part one as it ended up was these because i trapped on for a, a generous amount of time so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring a pad in so i can fiddle with a pen with a decent bit of focus ish and then i'm gonna go through the next one um so this one is a London pen company, uh, Christopher 14, and it is a, in a Jonathan Brooks resin, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, <clears throat> I know there's a couple that are similar. I think there's a Black Cherry Koi, an Arabian Nights Koi. I'm not sure which one this is. If you recognize it, please feel free to remind me. Um, from time to time when I'm buying a pen, I do get a bit excited and then I kind of forget to ask some details and whatnot. Um, so this was a couple of uh, pen shows ago, London pen shows ago. Um, went round, um, I was on my, on, on my way round on one of my, you know, wonders and cycles or laps and came across Sean, oh, who is the London Pen Company. Uh, based in Canada, had come all the way over to London to seek his fortune. No, um, to sell some pens. And uh, yeah, I was chatting to him. Uh, I'd seen his work online and was chatting away to him. And this one took my eye. Here we go. Sorry, it's been sitting inked and unused for a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, just caught my eye and I picked it up and I couldn't stop kind of turning it and fiddling with it and there's a nice bit of depth in this resin you see like some of the gold um not quite glitter but shimmer maybe um just amongst that i do like a koi pattern uh jonathan brooks done quite a few different koi uh resins i, I must say i do like them i like the white swirls amongst the color um so this has a broad yovo on it um which is very smooth, very nicely tuned, um, with a good flow. As I say, it's been sitting uninked, uh, not uninked, unused uh, for a few weeks uh, because of, if you watch part one, there was a pen purchase in there of the Visconti Homo sapiens. I'm not going to trap on again, um, but it's taken up a bit of my time. And um, yeah, so not used this in a couple of weeks, actually. But, you know, started up okay. Just a little bit of um, dryness there. Uh, this is a bit of a, a sheening ink. This is actually Diamine Desert Rose, which was a pen venture exclusive, uh, made for pen venture by Diamine. Uh, it's a purple with a kind of green sheen. Not sure we're picking that. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you're picking that up there. So that's a nice ink, but uh, it just might uh, dry a little bit or clog a little bit if unused, but going nicely now. But yeah, very nice pen. Um, on the larger side, uh, as the name suggests, Christopher 14. So it's a 14 uh, millimeter diameter in the barrel. Uh, it's a nice. Uh, concave section very comfortable so it's bigger pen but very comfortable um certainly in my grip uh threads are nice and smooth uh not sharp at all not intrusive there's a bit of a step down there um but you know there's quite a bit of room there so that's not resting really in my fingers at all and again it's not sharp or anything so you know uh it does post but not very deeply eh, 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 eh coordination so it does put but that that's that's a wand now you know um so I, I i don't generally post pens anyway uh unless 
there, there are occasions where size or girth or dimension makes me post a pen, but um, generally not cartridge converter. There you go. Cartridge converter pen, converter included. Um, choice of Yono, Yovo nibs, went for broad with this one. Lovely guy, Sean. Um, really good chat when I was chatting to him. And yeah, um, does some really great work. So check him out if you can. But yeah, I uh, really, really do love this pen. Um, so I think this will be staying around with me for the foreseeable. What's next? So here we have a Black Robin pens. Um, Prospero uh, in, so the model is a Prospero. The material is another Jonathan Brooks actually. This is Midnight Evening. So as you can see, kind of you've got brownie, grey, silver, gold, nice bit of glitter, lovely material, um, especially when you catch the light right, which I'm not sure I'm doing. But it looks really, it's, it's nice mesmerising in the hand. Um, it's a medium Yovo on this, beautifully tuned Yovo, steel nib, uh, plastic feed bit smaller than uh, the London Pen Company one, but just as comfortable for me. Again, uh, thread's not intrusive, bit of a step down, but you've got a good sized section there. So that doesn't intrude on my grip at all. Um, very, very comfortable. This one's not inked at the moment, I'm afraid, so I can't play around and doodle silly little faces and stuff. Um, <clears throat> cartridge converter again which was provided, the converter was anyway. Um, this doesn't really post, you can kind of perch it there, but it just makes it really long and it's going to come off anyway. Um, but very, very comfortable pen, beautiful material, really well made um, by Black Robin Pens, uh, who is Meg, Meg Blackburn, I think it is. Um, Make some really nice stuff. This is the Prospero model. Uh, most of her models are named after characters from Shakespeare plays. Um, I think she does Ophelia as well and King Lear, etc. But yeah, really, really nice material. And uh, lucky enough to pick this one up. Had a bit of funds in the bank at the time when she, this was posted on Instagram and I got in contact. Very happy with this one. That one's a keeper. Moving on. Now then, possibly my, no disrespect or anything to any other pen makers out there, but possibly my favourite um, kind of independent pen maker at the moment is Silver Bell Pens, uh, which is John Sanderson uh, from Cornwall here in the UK. Um, that focus is bugging me. Sorry. Uh, so I, I'm not 100% sure of the model name of this because, again, I was a bit excited when I got it. Um, it's Silver Series. Uh, so John makes his silver trimmings with Argentinium, uh, which is a bit more flexible and stuff to work with, is my understanding. Um, but very, very beautiful nonetheless. Uh, I've got a lovely hammered clip finish there hammered finish on the clip i should say um you got the two metal bands there not actually dissimilar now i think about it from like the homo sapiens uh bands there um which is nice like that the material is another jonathan brooks i'm quite partial to a brooks resin um this is bohemian twilight uh so this was a recent london pen show purchase I've kind of made it my business to make a beeline for the silver bell table these days, uh, or the last couple of shows anyway. Um, I've been eyeing up various pens or lusting after the material, I should say, the Bohemian Twilight for a while. I'm very partial to a green uh, or a teal or a greeny tealy, that area of scale anyway, um, colour. 
and I do like brown and uh, just the, the mix of these there and you've even got some purpley blue um, little bit of sparkle uh, and it's just lovely it's gorgeous material it's right up my alley it's just right in that zone of my personal tastes and I really really love it I've kind of eyed up uh, the Leonardo Supernova in the Bohemian Twilight uh, seen a couple of others and I happened across this little beauty at John's table at the pen show so not only is it Bohemian Twilight it is a big pen which I do like is my preference so if I was to hold that alongside um, a Pelican M1000 it's a chunker Right, so similar length, maybe a little bit longer, a tiny bit longer, but um, yeah, a bit more girthy as well. It's a chunk, um, and it's lovely. So I think this might be the stepless series because there's no step on here. This uh, kind of steps on the cap so that it's not a flush finish. It's fine, suits me. Um, you got that nice little flare out on the section. It's really, really comfortable. Just sits in my hand very, very nicely. Um, and it's also got a number eight sized steel nib on it with a nice bit of ink splosh laser engraving motif, which I like. Uh, so the nib is made by Magna Carta pens. Uh, it's one of their number eight steel nibs, Ebonite Feed, which is nice. I like the um, I like the flat profile uh, Ebonite Feeds. Uh, I am partial to that look. Um, so it's a really good flow as well. It's a beautiful writer, medium. Um, so it is a medium, obviously. But what I mean is, it you know it comes up maybe on the thicker side of medium. But then you've got it's quite fine on the cross strokes. Almost a little bit of a cursive italic. Not sure that's by design, but it kind of comes out like that a little bit. Just marginally thinner on the cross strokes, but I really like it. Um, very nice flow in it. So the ink's not that colour, it's just that I've, you know, that's that's my swoosh hand, that's my swoosh finger. So I've mixed that with that. It's actually Diamine, Aurora Borealis. Use a different finger. There you go. Um, really good flow. Decently wet. Uh, you also got a little... bit of line variation in there you can get out of it and with that ebonite feed it does keep up very well I'm not going to push it too much it's not a flex but you can get a little bit of line variation out of that um, just with a bigger nib and longer tines so it's not a flex or anything but you know anyway so yeah I saw that sitting there and that's just well had to have that it's absolutely stunning I love it um, I can't see this ever going anywhere. You've got Silver Bell logo in the top there, again in Argentinium. Nice uh, flat bottom there, and again, cartridge converter. Converter provided. Absolutely gorgeous. If you get a chance to look at um, Silver Bell Pen's website, please, please do. He does some stunning stuff. Um, really great uh, fit and finish and workmanship as well. Um, top quality can't speak highly enough i have another silver burl as well um from previous pen show so he does some stunning work next up we have an anoto uh rosetta stone black edition which i have reviewed before i will link so anything i've reviewed i'll link in the description below as well um, and potentially any of websites uh, that I'm referencing. Excuse me. So, as I said in that video, I got this. A lot of these I've actually bought in person at London pen shows. Anyway, this was no exception. Had this about a year now. I love Anotos. Uh, I just, so A, the size of the pens, like the kind of Magna classic size is really good for me i mean look I, I can i can use it i can use any size pen but um it doesn't have to be huge i can use smaller pens but um kind of the balance and design and stuff like that does matter a lot um 
but the really comfortable section there, you've just got that nice little flare out there. So this has an 18 karat gold nib on it, medium, plastic feed. Uh, I believe they're Bok made, but I'm not 100%, so don't quote me on it. The nibs, um, cartridge converter, converter provided. Anoto branded, is it? Yes, it is. I do love the Anoto logo as well, even. Um, so you've got the O on O toe, you know, it's all in there. Um, I really like that. Really like that logo. Sterling silver furniture and accompaniments. A stiff clip, sterling silver, but you know, this doesn't come out in a shirt pocket for me anyway, so I'm not bothered. Um, I've got the, I didn't get the extra barrel weight in this when I bought it, but I have since added it in. So that adds about, it's like a brass tube, which you can um, insert into the barrel and fix in uh, with epoxy resin or whatever it might be. Um, adds about seven grams, I think it is, uh, to the weight. And look, I, I loved it before, but just that extra bit of weight in the barrel is, is more my bag. Uh, fits better into my zone of comfort. Uh, this nib's beautiful. Um, let's find a clean bit. So it, it, again, really nice, generous flow. Yeah, I'm mixing my inks again. So this is Diamine Earl Grey in here, if you're curious. But um, so with no pressure at all, just writes beautifully and, you know, lovely wet flow without being a gusher. Uh, works really well, beautifully smooth, a uh, bit soft as well actually, so again, you can get a bit of line variation out of it, it's not a flex, but it, it does have a nice bit of bounce in there. Um, absolutely stunning pen, and I've not even talked about the, um, obviously that kind of hieroglyph carvings in here, so you've got the sterling silver with like a burnished finish uh, carvings in there. Uh, you've got British Museum there, 925 for the silver. Um, so this, uh, so w uh, when people buy this pen, a certain percentage is donated to the British Museum, which is a nice touch. Um, and yeah, all the all the uh, engravings uh, in tribute to the Rosetta Stone, which was used to decode, decode or translate certain... Um, Egyptian hieroglyphs or glyphs or whatever the proper terminology is it's just stunning it's a it's one of those that's not just a pen and it's maybe it sounds a cliche but you're paying for a bit of work of art as well a lot of work's got into that uh this uh, these this is limited to 200 pieces this is number 34 um beautiful pen and this one's never going anywhere what's next So next up is another Anoto. This, uh, so I bought this one first. This is my first Anoto, so I have the two. Um, I actually bought this after I sold um, my Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age, which I talked about in part one. I'm not going to rehash, but um, so I sold that and I bought this with what I got from that. So I got. This from IZOD's um, website. I will stick a link in down below. Um, but yeah, uh, so this one has a steel nib, steel number seven nib. Again, I believe made by Bok, but don't quote me. Um, so this was pre owned. Uh, I think, no, it's not inked, unfortunately. I think I've got just a. I think it's empty and not cleaned yes not great with my cleaning sometimes need to clean so cartridge converter converter provided pre-owned pen i believe it was a custom request so you've got a golden pearl resin uh with green chasing which is a little bit unusual but i really like it's not for everyone some people go oh that's stunning and some people go i don't like that contrast with that personal taste isn't it um so yeah, you've got that kind of like vintage um Anoto the pen made in England. Um because Anoto is one of those brands that um shut down years and years ago and the brand has been revived um by 
James and Feng, and they do some lovely work. Yeah, it's expensive, lovely work, generally speaking. There's, um, but it's just great. I mean, like not not so much this one, but they do a lot of stuff, which is, uh, you know, like their their what is it, their heritage collection or oh, I can't remember now. Hang on. Providence is the word I was looking for. Uh, heritage and Providence, like collections. So more stuff like the uh, Rosetta Black. I mean, there's a Rosetta Stone, all sterling silver version, which is far, far, far beyond my reaching price, but is absolutely stunning. But they, you know, they do a Flying Scotsman pen with the furniture made from like the axle of one of the old steam engines um the oh I can't, I, I can't remember the name of the pen specifically off the top of my head but there's one made from a shipwreck there's the hurricane and spitfire pens which are respectively have bits of old uh hurricane plane and spitfire plane propellers turned into the clip and some of the furniture and things like that it's just some really nice history touches in there uh, the stuff they do so yeah it's expensive but a lot of work goes into it and the workmanship's fantastic and um lovely guys who uh run a noto as well really helpful great passion in what they do um so i'm always really really pleased um to talk to them even if i can't afford to buy anything off them at that particular time um but yeah love this pen uh, this had the barrel weight in it so i was kind of able to gauge that I really like the barrel weight and stick it in my Rosetta Stone. Um, so this has got a broad steel nib on it. It's not inked at the moment, unfortunately, but it's a beautiful steel nib. So, I mean, Anoto, most of their pens will come with a standard steel nib offering. Um, and then you pay extra for the gold nib upgrade. I think the gold nib upgrade is, uh, I think it's like a hundred and... 80 pounds off the top of my head for a number seven gold nib upgrade you can go further than that you can get a number eight gold nib upgrade um when buying the pen because i believe that obviously they'd have to uh remachine the section a little bit to accommodate the extra thing i don't know but you know i don't think it's something you can uh add in afterwards unless you send them the pen to be re machined um for the nib unit for a number eight nib unit i think they also offer now the the number eight titanium um upgrade so i think the titanium number eight titanium upgrade is 180 same as a number seven gold nib upgrade and then if you want a number eight gold nib i think that's like 360 like another 360 quid so yeah expensive um so you would have to decide whether those upgrade options are worth it to you. Um, but their steel nibs are fantastic. So unless it's... Look, I've been through this personal struggle with gold versus steel nibs sometimes myself. I don't know. I'm not an aficionado. I'm not an expert in nib material and whatnot. Does it? There's that age-old debate. Is, this, is a gold nib upgrade worth it? It's often going to depend on the pen brand. It's going to depend sometimes on the specific nib. I mean, it's not easy. You can't just say, oh, a gold nib's a bit softer. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. You can get a soft steel nib. You can get a hard gold nib. It depends on the brand. It depends on the nib size, grade, this, that, the other. So it's not quite that simple. Sometimes it comes down to do you want a pen with a gold nib in it? Because you're a bit of a, I don't know, you, you it's a, I don't want to say snob. And I'm going to count myself in here as well. But sometimes I think it is. It's just like, oh, I want a gold nib in it. It's a really nice pen. I love this pen. I want it with a gold nib because it's a bit more prestigious. It's a bit more luxury. Um, it's a bit of a mental thing. A bit of a snob thing. I don't know. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, these are all luxury items. Um, you know, past one pen, 
if you've got one pen which you use all the time and it's beautiful and perfect then absolutely fantastic um but if you are a fountain pen hobbyist if you are an accumulator a collector obviously you don't need more than one pen of course you don't but i want them i want all the pens so it's all luxury items past the one pen point really so do you want that extra bit of luxury does it make your writing experience better answer sometimes it depends this steel nib's fantastic i've got no desire to upgrade this to a gold nib for example however when i was buying the rosetta i was asked do you want it with the steel nib that comes with it or do you want to upgrade to the gold nib now it helped at the time that i was at the pen show and they have um different pens laid out with with all the different nibs so you've got uh sample pens or try out pens so you can try a steel fine medium broad you can try a gold fine medium broad to see if you if you notice the difference if you like it and all of this now i i was very close to just taking the steel because this is an expensive pen anyway um it also helped that i was at the pen show and they offered a pen show discount so like i think it was 20 percent. so you'd almost taken the price of a gold nib off the pen as the 20 percent show price discount at the time don't know if they do that all the time and then 20 percent discount off the nib and i was trying the nibs out and i don't know if it was psychological or not but i thought i noticed enough difference and enough extra luxury in the nib writing experience it's like just that teensy weensy marginal bit of softness smoothness wetness like i say don't know if that's true that was actually a practical experience an objective experience or whether that was psychological because i wanted a gold nib in my beautiful luxury pen don't know that went on a bit, didn't it? But anyway, those options are available. It was my point. So, I'm up to nearly half an hour again, and I've got two pens left. What do you think? Crack on, or do we do a part three? I'm going to crack on. I'm going to try and crack on quickly. I'll try, no promises. So, Pelican M1000. I recently reviewed this, so I'll link it below. So I'll try not to bang on too much because I banged on quite a bit in that one. Um, I I don't know if everyone's got it, but the, the, sometimes there's a, a Pelican versus Mont Blanc thing. Um, you've got the M1000, you've got the 149. Um, they're luxury pens. They're Grail pens. It kind of comes down to personal taste. I love pelicans. Sorry. Um, I don't know. They just speak to me a little bit more. Um, and like I say, I'm not going to gush and trap on too much. Suffice to say that I absolutely love this pen. I got it at a good price. I got it from John Foy, St. John, St. John's Pens. Again, at a London pen show. I love it. Uh, it's got a fine nib and a pelican. It's not inked at the minute. It's just, again, needs a clean um but it's bouncy it's got line variation and it's soft it's a bit broader than a normal fine as pelicans tend to be but it's gorgeous and i love it and it fits in my hand perfectly uh i hired one of these from john through pen sharing uh quite a while ago and it was one of them that just instantly fit in my hand i don't know if I'm sure other people have this. Some pens, you love the pen, but it might not instantly fit in your hand. You have to kind of work your grip or adapt your grip a little bit, work out quite where you want it, quite where you want your fingers, where you want it to rest, etc. This is effortless for me. It just slots in my hand. Fantastic pen. There you go. Said I'd be quick on that one. Uh, next up, so I've got a Diplomat Excellence A2. I have two of these and I put this one in the top tray at the moment 
because it's not my favorite finish. I'm going to grab the other one, actually. So I've got two of these. I, as I say, I'm a green person, right? I mean, not literally, not the Hulk. Yeah, I like green. So I, I prefer the finish on this, right? But we're going to go back to the gold nib versus steel nib thing. So I managed to pick up this one. So I'm not massively enamored with the all chrome finish. At the same time, it's fine. It doesn't offend me. And in my mind, it affords me uh, free reign to put whatever color ink I, I want to in it rather than kind of, I want a green ink in this. I mean, I can put anything in this, but you know, my mind is messed up, man. Um, so this one's got a 14 carat, is it 14 carat? Yes, 14 carat gold nib in it, a medium. Um, managed to pick this one up at a great price, actually cheaper than I picked this one up for. This has a broad steel nib in it, and it's a fantastic smooth broad steel nib. Absolutely love it. But seeing as this was the price it was, I picked it up, um, and this has a medium gold nib on it and this is really nice it is has soft and a bit of line variation I tend to use this if I want to do a bit of write a nice not lengthy but a nice note or a nice short letter because I've just got a little bit not flex but I'm going to write flex anyway um, it's just got a nice bit of variation and give in it so it's not massively flexy, but just soft enough to give me a nice bit of character if I want it. Um, not that I'm brilliant at writing with flex nibs anyway, but you know, I like to try stuff out and it's my pen, so I do what I want, right? Um, so I love this nib. So, I mean, these are, I believe, unscrewable nib units. So even if they're not, I could just friction fit, swap the nibs over, but I think they're, they're screwing not done it yet might do so i could just swap them over if i wanted that finish with this nib um but uh really really enjoy this nib at the moment um beautifully smooth diplomat nibs generally have a very very good reputation uh, and these two are no exception so again we're back to that steel nib versus gold nib to be scientific i'd need a medium steel to see how that writes um but i love the excellence model regardless i just think they're really really good they're probably understated but it's um metal body and then whatever finish on top whether it's kind of lacquered um finish or whether it's like your all metal chrome fingerprint magnet um cartridge converter again inclusion of an o-ring there for seal and uh, diplomat branded converter yes don't know if you can see it but it's on there um but it's a nice weight in it it's a really nice balance it's not the biggest pen in the world but it's not the smallest it's a nice again just fits in my hand really nicely this is a really nice everyday writer uh for a pen um a little bit subtle nice uh slip slip cap there it's just lovely it's one of those that i'd heard a lot about and finally got hold of one now i have two uh i wouldn't be surprised if i picked up some more of these in the future i just really really like the balance and the weight and the feel of the pen so i might get a different nib again um yeah because i've really fallen in love with this model uh over the arrow right i hope some of you are still watching and if you are I love you. Um, if you're not, then, well, I'm not talking to you anymore. I hope this was vaguely interesting for you. Let me know if there's anything you like, didn't like in the comments. Um, or if you want to see more of any of these. I'll, if I haven't done a review, I'm sure I'll do one at some point. Um, take it easy. Hope you're enjoying your collections. I'm enjoying mine. I'll see you next time. Bye.